Brampton. It's not like Brampton now where everyone is a Sadar now. Everyone <laughs> has a Jura. Everyone has a Gutka. All the, all the teachers are all Punjabi, right? Yeah. It's not, it wasn't like that for me. I was the only Punjabi kid in my whole school. I was the only, I was one of two kids, I think, two or three kids from India. There was uh, one Muslim kid, a smiley kid, and there was one Hindu kid, and I was the only Punjabi kid. That so bugged, I, I never something. understood. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I really stood out. And I was like, man, I don't belong here. And people would look at me like I don't belong. Okay, you know, yeah. Even though I went to private school, still it was a whole lot of racism. Still I was, I was picked on. Even a teacher say some things to me growing up, right? And I think it was all because there was a lack of education. People didn't understand our culture. culture they didn't understand exactly. why we were a bug. I didn't understand growing up why I wore a bug. I did it because my dad said I had to do it, right? Yeah. Um, even when I went to learn more about my culture, uh, my dad sent me to sick camp one year uh, yeah. after university, after high school, grade 12. I went to sick camp. So I'm in sick camp in New York, and I'm there. And over there, I don't fit in. I'm like, oh, the Canadian kid who doesn't fit in with everybody doesn't else. And, yeah. you know, and, and I talk a little bit different than everybody else. And <coughs> I'm the new guy coming in, and I don't fit in. So I'm in Toronto, I don't fit in. High yeah. school, I don't fit in. You know, sick camp, I don't fit in. And the weird part is I would go to India so often because of our business. Because yeah. mom and dad would go purchase. There was no WhatsApp or video calling back in the day. <laughs> you went to India every three months to go get <laughs> new merchandise, right? Yeah. So I would go very often with my parents at least once a year. But when I'm in India, I'm with all my family and my cousins. And I'm the... NRI <laughs> kid, the Canadian kid. Oh, Canada to aaya munda. Dekhe ode bag chikki aaga. Dekhe ke kere kapre panda aaga. Dekhe kere toothbrush aaga. Kere kere paste use karda aaga. Kere aaya use karda aaga. And I'm like, bro, why am I being looked at like an alien? I'm in Punjab. I'm in India. This is supposed to be my country. Yeah. So in Canada, I don't fit in. In India, I don't fit in. Where the hell do I belong? <laughs>
and then ended up space. switching majors, um, shadowing actually marketing, not supposed to be in the marketing career, in the, uh, in the marketing line, and I ended up switching majors. And next thing you know, I'm in business. Um, I decided to start a few companies after university. Yeah, I okay. did a, a, a food tour company, a consulting company, um, and uh, it was okay. It was all right. It was a lot of fun, but it wasn't making a lot of money. Yeah. Mm. And then my dad would tell me, Jonathan, you're going on these uh, food tours. How much are you making? Yeah, How yeah. much are you making consulting? Yeah. I'm like, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, they're yeah, enough yeah. to like keep things going and keep building momentum. Mm. And he's like, man, just come work for me on the Saturday, Sundays. And you can do what you want Monday to Friday. You can work on your full-time job uh, as a cons- consulting and marketing. And um, yeah. I was like, all right. I started Saturday, Sunday working at the store. And uh, I was really good at it. I really yeah. liked talking to people. I enjoyed helping people with their wedding outfits. Yeah. And then it became Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And next thing you know, I'm like quitting my job and <laughs> I'm quitting uh, the consulting. I'm quitting <laughs> the marketing food tour company. And even yeah. though it built really, really well, we were number four on TripAdvisor. So we were right behind um, CN Tower and Terra Science Center and um, the AGO, uh, ROM, and then we were fourth. So we That's ranked crazy. really high. Yeah, we got a certificate of excellence and everything. But, you know, I had a partners in the company, and after everything was divvied up, it wasn't left with a lot much. Yeah. But uh, it was a great learning experience. And then from there, I just sort of kept on grinding, grinding away at uh, the family business and started working out full-time there, and um, now here I am. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, and that's uh, one of the things that we talked about briefly, too, before we started the pod is, like, your dad originally, I mean, your mom and dad originally started back in 1984. And if you look back <laughs> at the journey, we're in 2024. The longevity of sustaining that, you know, the excellence of the bridal shower competition scene is not easy. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. nowadays. It seems like every other day there, there's a new company or any, somebody's coming about. It's crazy, it's it's crazy, crazy. how many they are. Insane. And the fact that you guys can able to sustain that for such a long period of time. And, and as you said, your guys' parents had that old school mentality <clears throat> that carried them to the point they are today because a lot of people will get misconstrued is you need those old traditional understanding of the business for it to long last this long. And incorporating, as you said, your marketing understanding and the strategies that you can incorporate and now you put it together, it's like a well-oiled machine where you guys are also in tune with your traditions and in tune with the marketing side that is required in today's day and era without it so hard to sustain that so you know walk us through that journey because you know me and Mark always you know talk about it is with our fathers like that peer pressure you know you are coming from a family where you know you guys have a line of business mm-hmm. right you know sometimes be like okay why are you doing this come on this side you know where it's just easy come work for us did you ever feel like you ever got like peer pressure or was it just something like you know what let me try it out let me see how it feels and if it feels good I want to proceed with them more and more because a lot of people do have that, you know, tendency where, like, they get peer pressured into the family business, and they end up in a situation that either they have a resentment towards it later on, or just they never speak about it. Yeah, you know? no, no, you're 100% right, Baji. You got it exactly on the nail, is that a lot of people are very fearful about entering the family business, as was I. Mm-hmm. Like growing up in, the, in school, in, in high school, you know, I went to a a small little private school. So they had very much one-to-one attention. So my dad was very hands-on of my whole education, my whole life, you know. It was very important to him. He was a 10th standard dropout in India. You know, his dad said, Aja Gadita Baja, you know, come at the store and start <laughs> working. And, you know, so he pulled him out of school at 10th standard. And my dad was like, man, oh. that was my regret. If mm. I had gotten an education, I don't know where I would have been today because my dad is super sharp. Yeah. Anyone has known him, his name is Cookie. You mentioned his name. You know, <laughs> yeah. everyone knows him all around the world. Everybody now, knows especially him. with our with our TV show. Yeah, um, but yeah, he's always the most well dressed guy. He's always so um, well spoken in in terms of uh, who he is and in his own comfortable language of Punjabi. And uh, it's really amazing to see um, how well respected he is in the industry. But he was very was hands on <coughs> with my education, and that was super important to him. But he would still go to my mentor going out, be like, man, I just want Jandan to get an education and join <laughs> yeah. the business. Get an education and join the business. And I'm like, dad, I want nothing to do with the family <laughs> business. <laughs> nothing. I'm like, Lenge, Saudi, this and that. I'm like, I that's can't. not me. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah. I don't want to do that at all. Yeah. Um, but I think he noticed <laughs> that I did have this um, business side to me. You know, mm. I was, uh, when I was younger, I would uh, 
take things and always flip them. I would always flip them here and there. I would always have my own hustle. Like uh, one time you came home with a box of like 24 chocolates, you know, like the full yeah, 50, yeah, full yeah. case, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. 24 chocolates. I'm like, after like, I'm so excited. Oh my God, a case of chocolates. <laughs> but you know, uh, what are you going to do after eating like two, three of them? You get sick of them. Yeah. So I thought, man, I have this lunchbox. I packed them all into my lunchbox and I took them to school. And during our cafeteria at lunchtime, we didn't have vending machines. We couldn't leave the property because it was pretty strict, right? Mm. So I would sell them to my peers for like $2, $3, $2. And I'd come home with like, you know, 20, 30 bucks and then they all change. <laughs> yeah. And I did that That's for yours. a little while. Mom's like, what is, what are you doing over there? Where's the chocolate like, Where's all the chocolate Where's all the chocolate going? Where's all the around here? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, the gone, those business line school. Yeah. Business yeah. Business school. Line. She's like, you know, stop that. Stop that. Stop that shit. You're not doing that anymore. <laughs> You're going to school for education. You're not going there to sell chocolate bars. What are you doing? <laughs> um, and then you know I did that and I realized that hey you can take something you can flip it and people are willing to pay for it people have money on them and uh, I did that again uh, I think maybe like six months later um, I had a friend I gave her uh, this little glitter bracelet you know my mom went to the bank and next to the bank was this Chinese store and they had all these little trinkets they got from like China and stuff like you wouldn't yeah. see it normally at like you know normal places Very right soon, normal yeah. uh, stores and whatnot and they had this little glitter bracelet and I gave it to a friend and she wore it at school and everyone asked her, yo, where'd you get that bracelet? And she's like, oh, I got it from Chandan. He gave it to me. Mm. And next thing you know, everyone's asking me for this bracelet. Yeah. I got them at the Chinese store for like 50 cents. Ended up selling them for five bucks. So I sold them five bucks you, five bucks, five bucks, five bucks. And next thing I know, again, I'm making 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're like, Ch- mom's like, again, like, Chandan, what are you doing, man? You can't be going. Uh, I didn't. How did you go school? Right? And... Um, I don't know, I think I just had that naturally just watching my parents my whole life because I literally grew up behind the counters. So when people say, oh, Chandan, I know a family business, I don't want anything to do with it, trust me, I know what it feels like to grow up in the family business. I had my diapers changed literally behind the counter. <laughs> like that was my childhood. I, I would ride my bike inside the store. My mom says pictures of me when I was like five years old riding the bike in the store back and forth. That was my allowance right down the yeah. hallway of the store, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so I grew up there. I understand when people say, I don't want nothing to do with my family business. I get it. I was in there. But what I realized is that I have very amazing parents. They were so supportive my whole life. They let me do whatever it is I wanted to do. Yeah. Although they pushed me for sure for the sciences, but you know, I had a fairly leeway of what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I still gravitate towards marketing. I still gravitate towards a business. So I did get a proper formal education in marketing. Mm. And I was very grateful for that because that allowed, that gave me the tools to take almost interest in my own family business. So if I, if there are any people watching out there that are thinking, man, how can I get my kids involved? Allow them to take some courses, just some educational mm. stuff. Just watch some YouTube videos even nowadays, right? Or just anything regarding business that might interest them because you never know what sp- might spark their interest. Exactly. So for me, I remember going into that one elective course I took, which is a marketing was elective then. And it was all about brand management and brand identity. And so they say, you know, brand identity, McDonald's has those golden arches, red and yellow. You know, IBM has that blue color. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, BMW has that specific blue and white. It's a very specific shade of blue. You can never vary from that blue, any of their branding and marketing. And I was like, man, we don't have anything like that. You, know? yeah. you don't have anything like that as a small business. You don't, you don't learn those things. Oh, you have to have a specific color and should all should stay within that color. Um, then I learned that and I came back and I told my dad, I was like, Hey, listen, we're in little India on Gerard street. Yeah. I would love to like make our building a bit more iconic. It's the biggest building in the store in the area. In the no area. one recognizes us for our building. They yeah. It's so large. It's so big. It's four floors. And he's like, okay, what do you want to do? I'm like, it's this drab peach color. <coughs> I'm like, can we change it to hot pink and cyan? He's yeah. like, the <laughs> he's, like so cra- he's like, you're crazy. He's absolutely like, you're crazy. He didn't, even though he dressed so flashy, yeah. he was like, you're crazy. Can't do the uh, building. He asked about maybe 200 customers and friends and families that came into the store. Yeah. My son wants to do this. He wants to change the color of the building. He wants to change it to hot blue and pink, hot blue and pink. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, he's crazy. What are you going to do? And somebody <laughs> like, do it. Sense. It's going to be great. Yeah. My logic was that we're in little India. It, little India is to especially for people, it's associated with bright colors, vibrancies, you know, cultures, smells. Um, I really wanted the building to represent that. And so when he finally agreed to change the color of the building, we did. <coughs> and then it got photographed. It got photographed on New York's yeah, Time. Yeah, it photos. got photographed <laughs> uh, on Air Transit. It was on every <laughs> oh, wow. air flight on Air Transit. 
um, as like the iconic poster for must stop places in Toronto. <laughs> and Little India made the list, Crazy. and it was our photo of our building that the front for was yeah. was sort of like the the paper for uh, paper boy photo for the whole area, yeah. the neighborhood. Anytime anyone would talk about Little India, they would yeah. use a picture of our store, store, picture of our store. And then the next door neighbor made his building purple, and the other neighbor made his building hot That's blue. That's hilarious. And <laughs> then you know, and then they all started <laughs> making. And now it's you go down Gerard, and there's lots of great color around the area. And that's what I always had envisioned. I'm like, Toronto should have its little India feel like a whole identity. Like when you go to San Francisco, you see the houses, houses you know, yeah. like the yeah. full yeah. of house houses, you know, they're all different colors. colors I had that yeah. vision in mind, mm. yeah. you know, so I had that vision a long time ago to make that color work and it worked. You know, I realized that branding is really powerful. Marketing is really powerful. We had our bags. I changed that color as well. It was all hot pink and hot blue. Our business <laughs> cards were hot pink and hot blue. And the brand just ended up sticking. And now people, when they came to Gerard, they might not have remembered Chandan Fashion, they knew the color. but they knew the color. They were like, oh, that was the color. That was the building. That was the one we went to. That was the store we got that sorry. That was the store we got that Sharani. Yeah. That shit excited me. That <laughs> shit excited me. And so that's the thing. Like for anyone watching with, you know, how can you get involved with your, fir- with your family business? Do shit that excites you. Yeah. Do something yeah. that, that allows you to have some excitement what you do. And then for the parents listening, allow your kids to make mistakes. Exactly. So much time, we're so afraid of mm-hmm. mistakes um, oh, that's gonna be wrong. Nuksan will jaga this will jaga. Yeah, you can't forget it, but you gotta forget about those things, man. You gotta let your kids try stuff and make mistakes. Allow them to put ads on Instagram. Allow them to make their Instagram page, the Facebook page. Allow them to do a collaboration with a collaborator and uh, pay him a thousand bucks if you have to. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But at least you've encouraged your child to take some sort of step. And if it does click. That's where you see their their interests really uh, peek into the business. To answer yeah. your question, yeah, I think it's very important what you said is just like being able to allow your kids to experiment to to at least learn in different ways. Because what's happening nowadays is like, especially in our culture, or even just in like immigrant households, even if you just even step out of just being curious and being able to learn something that's outside of the perspective of just the normal route, then you just get backlash. It's like, no, this is not good. This is too much risk. You're risking too much money stick to what the plan is, this is how it should be, right? Yeah. Which ends up being is just, I mean, yeah, sure, it might work out for a lot of people, but the thing is, like, what, at least from my own perspective, my own experience, like, I had a men's grooming company before, a couple of years back in my second year of university. Yeah. I tell I'm right about this all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, like, everything, everything from the label, from the bottle, from the ingredients. like beer bombs and beard oils and beard all oils, that, right? Everything, <laughs> and then, like, the logo, just, like, how the... Just like how the the, the gold the gold foil looked on the lo- on the logo as well, right? Just everything, and it's just you know of, you know I'm not part of that company anymore, but like everything that I learned from that was just experimenting and just learning from the failures, dealing with distributors and stuff like that, right? And from that, you know, I added on to what I'm doing now, right? So I I you know I definitely do agree with what you're saying. Is just like we're definitely in a norm where you need to be able to be a cu- curious. You need to be able to experience and different things and different routes and, you know, being able to succeed as well, right? So, yeah, you, do, you definitely said it right, yeah. No, I think, uh, <coughs> Chandan, I think also referring to as is, one, you already come from a standpoint where your family has a business and, you know, obviously they didn't get there just being passive or yeah, not taking work risks. hard. One, they took a risk on themselves, but like, yep. now nah, we're going to make this work yep. at an age where, you know, nineteen in, in the eighties is not the greatest outlook oh you man. can say in Canada. It's not. It's not the greatest oh my landscape. I started working at a fa- furniture factory, man, making five bucks an hour. Now my mom right. used to work at a photo studio. You know, when she first started, they wouldn't give her a job, and she's like, "Yo, I, my brother's a photographer. I know what I'm doing." Exactly. They, they made her clean toilets. That was her first job. Like she's like, "Okay, fine. If you're so serious about getting a job, here's your first so come. job." Yeah. That was her foot through the door in this country, and she immigrated to, in Winnipeg when she was seventeen. Yeah. Um, but you know they still had the hardship, and people. Dad told me he was walking home from the factory. <coughs> someone threw a, a can of pop at him, walking home, calling him towel head, mm. turban head, right, or whatever the case was. They went yeah. came from very tough beginnings, and they bet on themselves. Exactly, and I think incorporating it in that in sense where, I think when you have that, as kids, as because it's our responsibility to you know not saying carry forward you know what our parents built, but understand what they have built is built for us. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know it's life. They're doing it for a reason. Is for either us and the grandsons and so on and so forth. And to leave a legacy behind. Yeah. Because the name Chandan, you know, the first name everybody can remember, but the last name lasts forever. That's that Chandan will nobody will forget. Nobody will forget it if you build a legacy. So what I try to tell, encourage people out there is who are, who's younger is understand the struggle your parents went through, 
and be mindful of what you're doing when you're incorporating it in your family business or in family or taking risk in general. So be mindful in a sense, we're like, okay, if I'm going to take this risk or I am willing to work on a business, have some sort of plan. Don't just be, oh, I tried. No, you really didn't really try because that's what happens a lot of the time. It's like people just kind of give a half-ass energy and they're like, I tried and I gave up. It wasn't for yeah. me. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the time I feel like nowadays – well, that's becoming more the norm where you, uh, compared to you, you're like, okay, let me see what I can change about this or incorporate my marketing strategy understanding and kind of bring this to light. And I think that's what people could take away from your story is, you know, have the curiosity mindset, be creative, tell your parents what you like, what you don't like, and make them sit down and let, like, look, this is what the idea I have, this is what it means to me, and this is what can come out of it. I think when you have those talks more and more, your parents will understand because I used to have this struggle where I thought I couldn't speak to my dad yeah. about a lot of stuff. I yeah. couldn't. Yeah. I really think I couldn't. But now I realize more and more, I'm like, my dad's not my enemy. No, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, could yeah. actually have these talks that I could have had before. Yeah. But I was just too afraid due to, you know, the fact of environment that we were in and how we were raised and how, quote, unquote, people say that's how it just works. Yeah. You know, you can't say anything back. You Especially can't. in our culture. In yeah. our culture. Like, it, it's hard. It's hard to kid to speak back to the parents. Not speak back, but like Just have, have some sort of conversation. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but I realized later, I'm like, my dad loves me for who I am, regardless of the mistakes I have made for everything I've achieved in life. He's going to love me regardless as, you know, as much as he wants to criticize us, but he loves us who we are. So, I think uh, kids out there just need to be more mindful of what our parents went through. It's not easy for them to see if we're headed down a bad route and if they criticize them, judge them. It's not coming out of hatred. It's coming out of care, love, and understanding. But like, hey, listen, we didn't build this life for you to just throw it away for no reason. Mm -hmm. We built it for a reason and for you to not have the same struggle that we went to so you can be at ease. Yeah. And that's what sometimes people, people have like a lot of, you know, I feel like <laughs> trouble understanding because like now you have, you know, I'm, you're, you're married, correct? Yeah. You don't have a kid right now? Or no. You, no, right? So like you're going to be going into that, well, hopefully one day here soon, whenever time be going to have kids and whatnot. So what would you say some of the lessons that your dad has taught you oh or man. your mom? So many. Like incorporated so many. to who you are today, you yeah. know, because a lot of time we, we don't talk about that enough. No, yeah, no, it's true. Um, my mom and dad have always been someone I've looked up to growing up. But like you said, it's also very difficult to speak to, especially in our Punjabi culture, right? I mean, in our South mm -hmm. Asian culture, um, our parents come from such a different background, especially if you're someone who immigrated here when you were young or you're born here and you don't connect with them the same way, you know, um, that maybe someone else has. Even if you're born in India or, or South Asia and your parents are born in South Asia and India, and you, it's hard to connect, man. It's, it's reality. I'm yeah, sure that people yeah. feel that even non-South Asian cultures, just how, it, how difficult it is to connect with your parents sometimes, especially for the teens that are listening and watching, man. Uh, it wasn't easy for me either. I mean, I just feel like they didn't get me uh, growing up. I always felt like they always try to cage me in and protect me, and 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 they meant for they meant love. They meant well. They wanted to protect me, right? But when you're younger, you just see that as like, man, they're just trying to hold me back or hold me down, or they're not trying to let me shine. They're not they're trying to help my friends or do this and that. But the reality is, is that they're just scared. They're yeah. just scared. As I'm sure, if I'm gonna have kids one day, I'm gonna be scared about what this little nigga's gonna do out there, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but you know, reality is, is that you have to. <coughs> You have to trust in the process. Yeah. You have to trust in your parents. You have to trust in yourself. You have to believe in all these things for work, to, to work, or to really have conversations. And uh, I think that as I got older, and that's like you said, as you got older, as I realized, that, oh, man, these guys are not my enemy. You know, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're really like my boys. You know, they're really like my friends. They're really there for me. They really want to see me succeed and excel. Um, and I think that was something that just sort of switched as I got older, and it kind of flicked like a light switch. Um, but what have I learned from them? I think I've learned that what it means like to have gratification in life. You know, like they passed on gratification so much their whole life. Like they never, growing up, they never went to fancy vacations or had fancy cars or had went out to fancy restaurants. Like the most fancy restaurant we went out, like growing up, was like Frankie Tomatoes, a buffet, right? <laughs> yeah. Like that was the most, that was like, you know, birthday, the birthday I got to, let's go celebrate yeah. Frankie Tomatoes, man. That was a huge deal. That's and hilarious. I was like, oh, dang, go to Frankie's today. You know, get a picture with the crown on and everything that wouldn't fit on your podcast. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I, I saw them work so hard and 
my whole life. You know, they would work 14 hours, 16 hour days. They go in at 11 in the morning and they worked like 2 a.m. at night. Back when Gerard was like super popping, it mm. was like the only place you could shop because it started out being as North America's largest South Asian market. To date, it actually still has 150 stores. That's I'm crazy. on the board of directors there as well. So I know that what the other markets are out there in Surrey and New York and New Jersey and out there. And I know that Gerard Street is still one of the largest um, BIAs out there. Um, but um, I saw them, you know, work my whole life. And I saw them not really say, okay, TK, I'm going to spend the money on myself. They would always spend the money on me. They spent the money on my education, my sister's education. They would spend the money on giving us clothes and giving us the best that they could afford, right? So I saw that selflessness to them, and I learned that myself as I, hey, you know what, in order to be a good citizen, to be a good person, to be a good friend, um, that you have to be selfless, you know. Uh, Even though I was tired after, you know, throwing SA jams and, and having these huge events where I was connecting people, I still go drive people home. I'm like, you know, I'm tired. I want to go home. I've been planning this thing nonstop for years and uh, months and months, and I just want to go home. But yet I would be the one, the DD, driving everybody, your home, <laughs> your stop, your stop, your stop. Yeah. And mom called me like three in the morning. They're like, Arni Ponche, I got. I'm like, no, <laughs> I got like two more, two more stops <laughs> two to more go. Two, to more, two people to drop off, right? That's so funny. <laughs> uh, you know, so it was being selfless. It was being like, you know, I put on this event. I put on the hard work. I'm not reaping the words of my of my fr- fruits of my labor and popping mm-hmm. bottles and having fun or whatever. I'm there for yeah. work. I'm there to do something. I'm there for a mission. And now it's my job to also give back to the people that were there build helping me character. along the way. Yeah, yeah. build character. Yeah. And that's what I feel like strongly about too. Yeah. Like <coughs> character. Cause he talks about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I mean, you were just mentioning too, right? Being selfless too. Is this, I mean, we, we talked to us way too much about like Seva <laughs> and stuff like that. Like it's huge. Right, uh, Seva is important. It's a pillar <coughs> of our. It's a pillar of our religion. Yeah. Right, but th- that's the one thing is like we we kind of that is not talked about is that we talk about Seva, selfless serve, right? Um, but there's the other side of it is like how are you supposed to s- help others if you don't help yourself first? Yes. <laughs> and that is not often talked about at all because it's a lot. It's especially a, when it's it comes to money. Right? Yeah, when it comes to money. Yeah. Especially when it comes to money, bro. Especially then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's just like it's it's crazy like. Um, you know, and it's a huge problem within our culture too, because like we're just always giving, 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 and then just not helping yourself first, right? It's just not helping yourself, and I think that's why a lot there's a lot of egoness, egoness in the wrong way, mm. um, and there's a lot of pettiness in our culture. Um, there's a lot of wars amongst each other. There's always anger and stuff like that. It's just because you're just giving so much away and you're expecting so much in return, right? And it's not genuine anymore right yeah. Um, yeah. it gets misconstrued the thing you is like sometimes become a slave to it right yeah because you're so concerned about loki they kind of exactly yeah, exactly right yeah, yeah man yeah. it's it's you need that's cool. the thing too i think when i think john is referring to as well the money aspect thing is in our culture it's like not only culture community wise community wise it's very toxic when it comes to that uh reason why i say that is like you've probably seen it firsthand when it comes to lending money giving out money it's almost like Nobody understands the principle behind what money is. I'm not saying like, oh, money means a lot to me. I could not have, I could have $10 in my pocket. If someone asked me if they needed a hand, I would. But thing is, do they understand the principle where the money come from? And do they have an understanding of what it means? Because for me, I tell Mok, whether it's $1, $5, $1,000, $10,000, $10, it doesn't matter. It's the principle. Is I, if, if I took money from you, it's the principle of paying it back. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's not about, you know, whether it's small amount, big amount. That's not the matter. I think people need to understand the the principle and we're straying away from that more and more but like oh no it's, i just forgot about it but like no that's where your character kind of takes a hit because you don't place importance on the things that need to be placed importance you know Bro, how mm. you do one thing is how you do everything yeah 100 yeah. percent. i believe that to my core and if someone taught me that a long time ago and i think it's really important how you do one thing is how you do everything yeah. Yeah. um how you dress how you behave the the, the principles you have returning yeah. money principles you have about giving you know um some people say oh you know what i'll give money once i get it no bro I, you can start by giving a dollar yeah, yeah. start by giving a dollar right and I, and I had someone also teach me that a long time ago like telling you see these homeless people and i'm like man i'm not giving them money these guys are just crackheads there's alcoholics they're gonna use the money for whatever mm-hmm. so, like you don't know <coughs> what life they're going through oftentimes yeah. you know and yep. I, this is from people who work really close with the homeless they're like you don't know yeah they might be buying alcohol but you realize that they got to sleep on the floor at night because they have yep. nothing to do they have not they have nowhere to sleep, sleep yep. so yeah. yeah you might be they might be buying an alcohol they might be buying a cigarette with that money but that might just get them through the night to make it one more day you never know when they might change their life around right so know. yeah no i was telling people in, like in muck i i have this it's not a bad habit but when i it breaks my heart when i do see someone who's homeless um i i, I was raised in india 
I lived in my 10 years. I seen a lot of impoverished places. I seen little kids out there in the streets uh, begging for money where the parents are pushing them out. So for me, it's always like the principle thing comes back to the principle again. It's like, even if I couldn't get money, be like, hey, are you hungry? There's a food court right across the coast. Just come there. I'll meet yeah. you there. And it's not even the gratification of me like, you know what, I'm doing something good in my life. It's just when he says, thank you so much, this is all I needed, yeah. brings me the greatest joy in life. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have to do that. And nor had, does he have to say thank you to me. He could take his food and leave. The but principles. the fact that, you know, it, it impacts him, you know, the, to that core, it makes you kind of think, you're like, Small gesture like that doesn't cost us that much. Nope. Mm-hmm. Doesn't take that much time it's out huge, of our man. day. It's, true. it's one simple thing. It's huge. And I think everybody can do those things more and more. Yes, sir. You know, and especially nowadays, like me and Mook talk about it all the time. We're so busy in our own lives. Half of the time, we're busy with nothing. Mm-hmm. Literally, as weird as it sounds, we're busy with nothing. You call someone, but like, what are you doing? I'm busy. Doing what? Nothing. Yeah. You're sitting on your phone, scrolling through bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so true, though. You need something. You know, now I talk about it, too. If you were to call on people, <laughs> they're like, I'm busy. Uh, if People that you think you're close to them, you need something, whatever it is. And they're like, I'm just busy. It's just like we're heading in this environment where like in it's such a selfish environment we're heading towards. It's kind of scary to me because like at the, one of the day, at the end of the day, our kids are going to come into this. You know, We're coming into the business practice and all that. So kind of incorporating it into yours, uh, your business. How do you – because like I heard a story one time. <laughs> From uh, one of the buyers from your store. Um, the customers? Customers. So yeah. she said she bought her bridal suit from, from yeah. you guys. And she's like, okay, uncle, like, give me the suit, whatever. And then he gave me $50 for my shogun. Oh, yeah? And I'm like, the hell? Yeah. I'm like, she knows you? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, I don't know. It's like the first time I met the person. And she did that. And then I'm like, damn, I'm like, he don't have to do that. Yeah. Your dad doesn't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like the craziest story to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that you know, shows. It's, <laughs> what it's kind just of like is. I show you, man. Like, there's so many. Like, when you're like, what lessons we learn from your parents? I like blank for a second because I'm like, I don't know where to start, man. <laughs> yeah. There was a girl once that came down, and this is actually a very early lesson I learned. Uh, the, I was my first year in the business, and so I was still learning. And back then, when I started, I was one of the first persons in Toronto, me personally, <coughs> as a young adult coming into a business as a, not just my family business, but in general, general. Of South Asian business. People didn't do custom orders back when I started in. I think 2012 it was. Um, people never did custom orders. Like they would say, okay, Tika, Lenga Panaga, we'll make it to your side. Same to same. Take that it. was the extension yeah. of the custom ordering. No one would do anything more than that. And I would say, you know what? No, we can change the neckline, we can change the colors, we can change the pattern. You want the border thicker, smaller, you want to add flowers. I would sit down and customize with the team in India. Mm. And one of my earliest mistakes I made was I picked a color from the color chart, and there's like 300. Back then, there was so like 400 colors in there. Now, it's like 800. Yeah, so Back then, there was 400 colors in there. I still remember the color, 47, 47D. <laughs> I still have nightmares of that color. And I hate working with it to this day. <laughs> what happened was, uh, I won't disclose the person's identity, but it was her second marriage. She had two kids, and she was an extra large bride. She was basically, uh, nothing would fit her off the rack. She would have to go custom. custom yeah. And so when she liked this lenga in the store, it wasn't her size. I said, like, no problem, make it to your size. I ordered it based on matching it, the color from the chart. It was 47D. It was like this basically <laughs> purple color. And what I didn't realize is I, I said, make it like the sample, right? The 47D, make it the same color. Everything was fine with the Lenga, except when the Lenga was there at the store, it was, this, it was something I learned now, which is called <coughs> two-tone silk. Okay. Or um, short silk is a, is a technical term for it. It's called short silk. So it's like, have you ever seen those scapre or those suits where it's like there's two tones in it? Yeah, 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 it's like purple and green. It's like blue and red. It's like two colors in it, depending on how you look at it. That's what that capra was. It was like a purple (laughs) mixed with like a kind of a wine, right? And it gives this very iridescent look. And I ordered it 47D, which is a solid color from the thing, from the chart. And so when the lenga came, she's like, Jalen, that's not my color. That's not the lenga. This is nothing like, this is like this (laughs) matte purple looking thing it's like eggplant and like, that's it? not what i want <laughs> at all she's like i'm gonna look like a giant freaking banging on my wedding day and she's like my in-laws already hate me i have two kids i'm guessing i'm guessing my second marriage you know and her be looking like her, this. her husband yeah. was like a good looking healthy pajabi young guy you know so they were they were probably the in-laws were thinking like, like so yeah. she's already feeling so insecure about herself i felt so bad that I was like, I'll fix this. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to fix this. She was like, my wedding's in a month. How are you going to fix this? Yeah. I was like, here, go to any store you want in Toronto. Pick whatever lenga you want. If you don't find anything for me, that's fine. Any store. Bring me the bill. I'll pay for it, whatever it is. Mm. She came back to me two days later. She's like, I went to every store. There's nothing in there that fits my size. 
I'm a triple XL. Nothing fits me. Nothing is remotely close that's going to work with me. And she was in tears. I was like, you know what? I'll fix this. I'll fix this. And then she's like, I don't know how, but I'll fix it. <laughs> yeah. I sent called her the next morning and I was like, I'm flying to India. I'll be back in about a week or so and I'll bring you a new lenga yeah, and I'm yeah. going to get it remade. And she's like, BS, you are. And I was <laughs> sent her, a p- I still remember I was at the airport That's and I sent her a picture of my boarding pass. Yeah. I booked my flight that night and I flew out within less than 12 hours notice. Wow. And I flew to India. I sat there in Delhi where that manufacturer was and I sat there every day and I saw the progress of the lenga. I remade it. I fixed the issue with the kapra uh, and I had it made to her size and I brought it back by hand because there's no way I would have made it otherwise, otherwise if they yeah. were going to ship it and <coughs> customs and duties. I brought it in my tachi. And then I came back and I delivered it to her. And she's like, I don't understand how you did that. You, the cost of the lenga isn't even as much as what the tickets were, <laughs> right? And then you're making a second lenga and now you're also stuck with this large triple XL lenga that looks like <laughs> an eggplant that no one's yeah. going to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, you know, it was a principle. And, and I learned that from my dad is that, you know, your word is your bond. <coughs> yeah. And if you give someone your word, that means you fulfill your commitment 100% of the time. There's no half-assing, half-assing it. You're going to yeah, not yeah. deliver 90%. Exactly. You're going to deliver 100% every single time, so right? So even to this day, I've taken that, those learnings and I've always applied it to all things in life, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. never bait and switch. If you promise a customer something, don't get it made cheaper somewhere else. Just because you have a different supplier, they can make it for cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So, you know, and even when I come to my store, I charge tax on everything. And people are like, oh, you're going to charge tax on them? And, you know, you <laughs> Indian stores, who pays tax? Yeah. I'm like, bro, we live That's in an so amazing cus- country. This is <laughs> Canada, man. It's one of the best countries in the world. Yeah. I'm like, our taxes pay for everything. And yeah. again, I don't want to shortchange you now or shortchange my government now. How I do one thing is how I do everything, everything right? Big. So it's important for me to do the th- everything by the books. And it wasn't, you know, obviously everyone knows Indian stores aren't always all like that. <laughs> yeah. But that was one of the things that was really important to me is to be ethical, is to run up good business. And, and, and that's opened a lot of doors. A lot of times these small businesses can't get loans. They can't get um, mortgages. And because so a lot of their, their dealings are done under the, ta- under the table, table, right? Yeah, yeah, so they have no income to show. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but like that was the thing, yeah. Your story is quite... Uh, it's crazy. It's <laughs> it's crazy. If you think you're working hard, you're not working hard enough yeah, yeah, yeah. to hear that story. Yeah. But your story, uh, <laughs> it was actually a previous guest that we had. It was Cam. Yeah, Cam had a similar story, like how he <clears throat> how he goes with like doing stuff for his clients. He goes out of his way, and <clears throat> he doesn't expect them in a sense like like because he has his own price, his own value, like what he said, his own uh, custom suits that he makes and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And people undermine that because they're like, okay, it's expensive. Like, why are you making it so expensive? Like. Make it cheaper for us. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. <coughs> but people don't understand. It's like there, there's a value. That price is there for a reason, yeah. right? And what you're not expecting is the amount of effort that goes towards building it, right? And building a suit, building whatever it may be, right? And be able to customize something that's perfect, like perfected to their perfected likes. to you, like to yeah, make yeah, your yeah. dreams come true. And <coughs> Cam told like one story where I think a a, cu- a client came in and a client. Um, he didn't know any of this uh, this client at all, um, and he, I kind of asked him. He's like, "Oh, how do you know? My, how do you know know about me? Because it's it's not out there, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's it's like something similar to like Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce doesn't really advertise themselves. It's yeah. just the brand itself. So mm-hmm. he's like, oh, how do you know my brand?' And he's like, "Actually, he's like, it's actually a friend of mine uh, that told me about you, and they did a FaceTime and everything. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you didn't buy a suit for me, and that client that was on the FaceTime, he was like." I didn't buy a suit from you, but the fact that the way you provide a service to me mm. and the guidance and then and the type of like genuine hospitality, yeah, yeah it, it's just it's just reflected and it's just people don't recognize recognize like the amount of effort, the back end of like how much effort it takes to just build you know a suit or a, some any type of kapara or service, right? You no, know, that kind of goes crazy. into uh, <coughs> perfectly into you know you guys' story because you guys are different, as you said, you guys you guys have a. You guys have pieces that you guys always display there. The cheapest, yeah. right? We're, everyone gives us a bad rep. <laughs> Telling fashion is expensive. You know, we're not the cheapest, exactly. but yeah. I do think I'm the best. Yeah. I really do. And, and that's something <laughs> that my dad and my mom has always instilled in the store. Yeah. They're like, you know, I don't want, they don't want to compete with the cheapest stores out there, but they do want to maintain a level of standard and quality yeah. that yep. like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to wear these garments. Yeah. I would wear this. You know, Sarvjit mm-hmm. Singh, Cookie Singh would wear these garments, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so that was really important. Same with my, my sister, you know, it was important that we would shop from, our own store, even whether we wore it or not or whatever, that was irrelevant. The point is that the quality had to be maintained there. Maintained, yeah. And that was really important for them. And like, you know, Cam as well, you know, it's it's um, it's um, that customer service that really goes far. Word of mouth, like customer service, that really helps a lot with any business. So yeah, yeah. 
opening new business, again, even if you don't think this person's going to buy, that's yeah. okay. I had a customer come to me actually two weeks ago, and she was like, hey, order my uh, outfit from a different store in Markham, and it's not coming on time, and my wedding's in one week, and I'm like, you know what? I think I know which store you're talking about, but trust me, it comes. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, know I, I, know it, I know I've heard <laughs> stories, but I'm like, from what I know also is that usually it comes. Just be patient. Yeah. I'm sure you that... The auntie, she delivers. It comes. The lenga <laughs> comes. Don't worry. It'll be, she's like, you know, I need a backup just in case. I was like, don't worry. Come on through. I came on through. And again, I was very calm and I wasn't trying to sell. I didn't say buy it. That won't come. This and that. I was like, trust me. I think it should be here. Yeah. If you want it, try. We'll try a couple pieces on. Yeah. And she tried it on. She's like, you know what? I just I came here really frantic today. Yeah. Just thinking that it won't come. But just knowing that how confident and calm you are right, and even right. dealing with me and having a piece set aside for me yeah. and told if you need any alterations, I'll have it done within next day service, 24 hours. I knew everything would be okay. You know, she said two weeks before the weddings or so. It was like two weeks, 10 days. I was yeah. like, I think it's going to be fine because these things always, they happen, right? When you're working with India. Yeah. And she was like, you know, I think it's not going to come. I'm like, it's going to come. And that's Essentially, she you. messaged me the next day and she was like, you know what, Chandan? The lenga came two days later, but I just wrote you a five-star review because you weren't pushy at all. Yeah. You didn't try to make the sale. <coughs> She's like, I'm definitely going to recommend my friends to you. And for me, it was not about the sale. I knew she wasn't going to buy that day. She was just looking for a backup, backup option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I could be there for her, and I could show her my products. I can show my offering. I can show my price points. And she could understand why the prices were the prices. <coughs> it's a level of service you get. It is. And then kind of incorporating that your business side, in, you know, including your fashion. So where do you guys get that sense of inspiration for, uh, inspiration for this constant new design and how you come with it? Because I'm... W- we don't know anything about when it comes to lengas. <laughs> I don't know anything this either, man. Since, but, but you, but like you know, working alongside with your dad, your mom, your sister, how do you guys maintain that quality, man? It's not easy. And no, as we spoke about no. before, there's hundreds and hundreds oh, yeah. of freaking bridal, this bridal yeah, dad. Yeah, but everyone working out of their basements, their <laughs> yeah. homes now, right? And then we have to compete with them. And you yeah. know, we're out here paying eighteen percent duty on everything we bring in. Plus thirty percent taxes. So if you buy a suit for a hundred, by the time it comes in, we it becomes one eighteen, and then we pay thirty percent HST on all of that. All of it becomes like one forty five, even though it costs us a hundred, and that's yeah. just to get it in our door. And then that doesn't even cover the cost of shipping and courier, plus our own, you know, mortgage, yeah. the store, Over staff, the employee, yep. insurance, hydro, all that. All those costs get added on. And I'm competing with somebody who's operating out of their basement, basement. and <laughs> no that guy is cost. not declaring it. <laughs> he's bringing in as like a sample, or his boy is bringing in a suitcase, you know, a bunch of jewelry out of her basement, and she's selling the same thing that I paid for a hundred became 140, 145. Yeah. Yeah. She paid a hundred for it, but it stayed at a hundred, and she has no other overhead. And I'm competing with those guys, right? Yeah. So the only way to really beat them is number one, my quality has to be good. The yeah. level of customer service has to be good. My variety has to be good. I'm a big store. I have four floors over there. Now we have a second store in Brampton. Yeah. And that one is also a very curated collection as well. Our variety has to impress the customer. And they have to know that they're getting their money's worth when they're spending with us, right? Yeah. Um, and how do we compete? I wish I could tell you, bro. I really... <coughs> I think we my, know now. My dad says yeah. it. No, my, my dad says it all the time. He's like, <laughs> uh, uh, what did he say? Punjabi ji kande aage? Kande... Uh, jama He's like the, that's what he always says to people. Like, how did your son get involved? He's like, oh, Petro no pata si right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, he well, was DJ since, si, yeah. since birth, right? Just I think birth, I, yeah. I think it was just um, watching my mom and dad their whole life, and my yeah. dad learned it from his grand, his dad as well. You know, we have a store in Fraguada where we're from in Punjab. Fraguada, wow. Yeah, oh, and like then it's called Cookie chain. Silk Store. What's yeah. it called, sorry? Cookie Silk Store. Oh wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm actually very proud that um, I. I Technically, not supposed to announce it, but I don't think this <laughs> podcast is coming out till after Friday. But t- on Friday, yeah. uh, we're announcing that we got season three of our TV show Bollywood. Oh, CBC. So it's season on CBC, three, right? it's on CBC. CBC yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're super excited because season three, the whole story arc is us going to India, India? Wow. and going to oh, okay. Pagwara, going to Punjab, and seeing where we came from. Because in season two, uh, the last line of episode ten on the show is, you know, to know. Your future, you must know your past. <coughs> past yeah. And that was really important line that dad kind of dropped over there at the end of the show. And that w- that's kind of what the whole premise of season three is. So now we're going to yeah. uh, Fogwara. We're going to go to his store where dad grew up and his grandfather started the store and, and see where his you know, humble beginnings became from, right? And I think that's where we get our sense of our quality, our work ethic. It's, it's lineage, man. It's passed down. Yeah. No, speaking about your, pa- uh, your TV show... <laughs> Funny story. <coughs> um, I think we were just, I, I was just like, because I watch your show, 
and it's amazing. Like me, and my dad, like thank you. My dad, my dad, my dad, like watch. He's like, what is this? He's like, <laughs> who's, this, <laughs> who's this uncle? He's <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, he seems too happy. Like this, yeah. this is not this is not normal. Yeah, yeah. And then he watches it. And he's like, man. He's like, we need to. He he got happy about it because like I have that type of relation with my dad too. Like he's my best. He's my number one fan. We had a. Had him on the podcast. podcast. Yeah, we had no it Had him for jumping. Everything. That yeah, he yeah, yeah. loved it afterwards, and he just continues. His I don't know. He's like he's some. He's like it's my tenth time watching it. He's like we're gonna do a number two. But anyways, like I was watching uh one episode one time, and then it happened to be like uh you guys started following us. I got a notification that you guys followed us. I was like I was like oh, okay whatever. But then I was like wait. I was like I'm watching Bollywood. Like, you're getting followed. I was like, this is too good to be true. And yeah. I told her, I called her. I was like, yo, bro, is this, is this really, this is how it is? Like, is yeah. Jonathan Fashion really following us? I was like, yeah. this is sweet, man. Yeah. No. But it's, it's interesting. Like, j- like, you know, previously we were talking about, like, just your relations with your parents and just, like, just seeing that on, on TV, too, right? You can definitely tell Jeez, that. Because, like, my, they put my dad a, a smile on his face. He's like, we need that those type of TV shows. Because whenever we do talk about TV shows, but Punjabi is usually drama. People like us mockery. never came up, bro. Yeah. No, and never, came never came up. And it was mockery too. Yeah. Even if you look at like drama show, man, our parents can freaking watch drama show 24-7. Yeah. It's not even a real story. Even it even turns a real into story, real. Yeah. It's not yeah. even real. They can put like, what happened to you? What happened to you? What happened to you? I'm like, it's not reality. The closest thing we had growing up was the Indian channels. Like, and I mean, like the one like channel 7 or 8, it was, you know, Eye on Asia. Mr. Zohota had a show. I remember my parents would watch that growing up. That was the closest thing that anybody growing up in this country had yeah. to have any representation on the show. And even then, there wasn't any Punjabis. It was like, you know, Mr. Sota on there. Mm-hmm. And his daughter was on there too, I think. Uh, you know, so I would see that. But that would be in the background. Mm. No kid or no young adult would ever sit down there and watch that show. Their parents watched that show. And that too was just because that was the only show. That, that was like the only <laughs> thing to connect them to somewhat with their culture because everything else was all... You know, local content. It was all yeah. Gore. It was all Chine. It was all yeah. different people, African Americans. Our community never got a chance at being on media, and that was so yeah, important cool. to me growing up to know that I was very cognitive of that, of that, of that gap over there. Yeah. Um, I was someone who was born and raised in Toronto, and I went, like I said, I went to a private <laughs> school, and I never fit in. I was the only Sadar in my whole school. Mm. And that was the reason why I went to private school. We couldn't afford it, dude. Oh. There was times where the principal called me into the yeah, s- to yeah. the to the <laughs> class to to her yeah. office. She's like, "Chandan, your dad's check bounced," and she's like, uh, "You want to let him know?" And I was like, "Hey, I'll let him know. You know, it's it's we'll work it out. We'll work it out. You know." And I'd go tell dad, and he's like, "Principal, look at that coin. He half that, half that, half that. Time then, I come like a take no worry, right? You know, business is slow, I guess. So summertime pick up, I guess, right? So it was like that, and you know, so we couldn't afford to go to private school. But he, for him, it was like really important to protect my culture. My religion, that was his way of doing so. You know, he thought he didn't have control at the public schools downtown. It's not like Brampton now where everyone is a Siddhar now. Everyone <coughs> has a Judah. Everyone has a Gutka. All the, all the teachers are all Punjabi, right? Yeah. It's not, it wasn't like that for me. I was the only Punjabi kid in my whole school. Yeah. I was the only, I was one of two kids, I think, two or three kids from India. There was uh, one Muslim kid, a smiley kid, and there was one Hindu kid, and I was the only Punjabi kid. So uh, I never understood. Yeah, Yeah. so I I really stood out. And I was like, man, I don't belong here. And people would look at me like I don't belong. You know, even though I went to private school, still it was a whole lot of racism. Still I was was picked on. Even a teacher say some things to me growing up, right? And I think it was all because there was a lack of education. People didn't understand our culture. Culture, They didn't understand why we wear a pug. I didn't understand growing up why I wore a pug. I did it because my dad said I had to do it, right? Yeah. Um, Even when I went to learn more about my culture... Uh, my dad sent me to sick camp one year uh, yeah. after university, after high school, grade 12. I went to sick camp. So I'm in sick camp in New York, and I'm there. And over there, I don't fit in. I'm like, oh, the Canadian kid who doesn't fit in with everybody doesn't else. And, yeah. you know, and, and I talk a little bit different than everybody else. And <coughs> I'm the new guy coming in, and I don't fit in. So I'm in Toronto, I don't fit in. Yeah. High school, I don't fit in. You know, sick camp, I don't fit in. And the weird part is I would go to India so often because of our business. Because yeah. mom and dad would go purchase. There was no WhatsApp or video calling back in the day. <laughs> you went to India every three months to go get <laughs> new merchandise, right? Yeah. So I would go very often with my parents at least once a year. But when I'm in India, I'm with all my family and my cousins. And I'm the... NRI <laughs> kid, the Canadian kid. Oh, Canada to aaya munda. Dekhe ode bag chikki aaga. Dekhe ke kere kapre panda aaga. Dekhe kere toothbrush aaga. Kere kere paste use karda aaga. Kere aaya use karda aaga. And I'm like, bro, why am I being looked at like an alien? I'm in Punjab. I'm in India. This is supposed to be my country. Yeah. So in Canada, I don't fit in. 
in India yeah, I don't, don't fit, fit in. in yeah. Where the hell do I belong? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I had this really weird identity crisis going up, and it wasn't until I went to York where I finally were like, oh my god, there are brown people everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Punjabi people everywhere. Because you gotta remember, I was raised on in downtown on Gerard, right? I mean, I had Gerard Street, okay. but again, that's just like this little business oh, no, street. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not really like you can form um, the relationships out there. You know, or the, the schools funny. were all white, the neighborhoods were all white. Yeah. Um, so when I went to York, that's where I was like, oh wow, there's South Asian people everywhere. Yeah. First thing I did was I signed up for SAA, South Asian Alliance, and I became part of the South Asian group, and I was like, man, I want to feel like I belong. People that speak my language, people that understand what Dalroti is, what you know, Pature are, you know, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they understand the value of Pangara and music and and all this, and that was really cool. Yeah. But I always knew that there was nothing on TV that looked like us, mm. so I was very cognitive of that. And I was approached at a wedding show uh, by Gurjeet, who's one of the co-creators of the show, and he's like, man, I really want to shoot a reality show on a family. And I was like, I don't know about that. I'm like, but I really want to <laughs> shoot a wedding show because I know that there's nothing on the market that exists. Yep. And our, our South Asian weddings are five days, seven days sometimes, Two right? Days. It's one week long. There's so many events. There's so many outfits. There's so many colors. There are 500 people, 1,000 people. It's a huge spectacle. Yep. I'm like, to put this on TV would give people an insight into our culture. Yep. So that's what I wanted to create. And he kind of married the two concepts together. And so the first day, uh, I remember I told my mom and dad, you know, we got the show. The show took us a long time. It wasn't easy, by the way. People yeah. think, oh, you guys are on Instagram, you guys are on Facebook, and, you know, yeah. all, all, all this TikTok, you guys are big, so you guys got the show. The show took seven years for us to finally get. We got, we seven went through years. 22 rejections, bro. 22 seven rejections. Years. Wow. We what shot our hell? first pilot in 2014. Yeah. Uh, we shot, uh, and I was like, oh, dude, we got a pilot, you know, we got our TV show, they're going <laughs> to yeah. market it to Good. TLC, Slice, all Good. these people, right, and we're going we're gonna to get a TV show, gonna be, it's going to be awesome, this is going to be famous, right? Yeah. No, crickets, nothing. Came back Please. a second year in 2015, we shot a second pilot uh, with the, now Gurjeet brought in a partner, it was, so it was a bigger production team, I'm like, okay, now they're putting more money behind it, it's going to be a bigger pilot, this is going to be, be even better. Yeah. It was a better pilot, it was a better product, but Still nothing. 2015, nothing. 2016, nothing. 2017, nothing. 18, nothing. 19, Gee, nothing. Damn, and we got crazy. nothing, nothing, nothing. Every year, I would get an email at the end of the year saying like, hey, John, we shopped it around to TLC. Uh, at one point, they even went to India, uh, Apka Colors, and um, Sony TV, and ATN, and why, you know, all these, Omni, Omni looked at it, all these different networks looked at it, and they all passed on the show because they said that <coughs> we have too many wedding shows, um, then we're not the right demographic for the audience of the show. Wow. Um, all these different ex examples. No, 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 no. And every email I would respond with, that is amazing. I'm so grateful. I don't think it's a, and I said it was, it's not a matter of if, but when. when. That was my signature of every email. <coughs> it's not a matter of if, but when. Because I knew that there would be a time where Apane would be on the come up, where we would be the people that they were going to cater to and run after to make content. Yeah. Look at Just Rain show right now, Late Bloomer. Yeah. I was Late there as premiere. Yeah. It was amazing. You know, yeah. Chaps did an amazing show uh, on that over there. He was the EP for that show. And Just Rain's finally getting his flowers. I mean, he killed that show. Did, that show was, was, I think when that show dropped, people were like, wow, we can create this type of drama content. Yeah. Like, we didn't think it was even possible it compared to what Just Rain was shooting for YouTube. I was a huge fan of his, right? So yeah. it was amazing to see that content. And even with our reality show, I'm very impressed with it. And you guys got to remember, we're not real actors. We're not trained actors. Yeah. Uh, I dropped drama in grade 11. You know, that's <laughs> the furthest I took with, with anything acting related. So our first year, we were super uncomfortable. There's four cameras, all red cams and these big expensive cameras. Um, Schitt's Creek had two red cams. We have four on our show. That was really important to me to make sure they capture that. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was really important that they represent our culture mm -hmm. on the show. That was the one thing I said. No fake people. Yeah. No no fake models coming on as, you know, brides and grooms getting yeah, married. Yeah. I'm going to want real Toronto people, real Canadian people with real stories that we can share because I know they exist. I'm in the business. It's a reality show. We know that this the, these type of people are out there. Yeah. Um, that was really important to me, and it was great to see them, you know, come through with that. And CBC believed in us, and um, yes, just around was. COVID, they gave us a shout. Do you guys want to do it? Actually, Crave gave us a shout first, okay. so wow. that's where Late yeah, Bloomer's on now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Crave gave us a shout first, and uh, Late Bloomer was with CBC, and then we ended up kind of switching positions. Just organically, <laughs> it just happened. You know, we ended up with CBC, and Crave uh, <coughs> took a uh, Crave took um. Uh, uh, the uh, Bloomer. Late Bloomer Show. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm so happy because I know CBC is such a family-oriented <coughs> network. They have high standards. It's government broadcasting. 
Um, and they really honor and protect our identity. The you know Susan, one of the uh, execs from CBC, the first day we started filming, and came to my mom and was like, "I'm a mom too. I understand yeah. this is your family. You're letting us into your home. I'm not going to put your family in any harm's way." Mm. Yeah, and that was so it's comforting important. to us, right? Because yeah. you have four cameras, we're all mic'd up. There's oh, yeah. a director, assistant director. Yeah. There's um, story writers, there's screen producers. There's so many, so many moving things to make a TV show happen, right? Um, a majority of it yeah. is reality too. It's like what you guys oh do yeah. day to day. It's not like just everything scripted, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what people don't understand. I think w- the one thing you hit on the nail on the coffin is there wasn't much representation when it comes to our community, our culture. When it comes to nothing, um, television drama, uh, like sh- showcasing what our culture means. Even magazines. There was yeah. no yeah. pictures of Sadars anywhere. No, there isn't. And I think that's why to this day there's still a lack of education, understanding of. When you when we do wear pugs, because we there is a difference with the way you wear your pug, where I wear, where Mook wear, it's different. But yeah. people don't know that because like it's easy for people to make condescending remarks rather than understand it because they have no knowledge of it. You know, yeah. amount of times I have walked around, you know, I remember in Cuba, I tell them all the time, like you know, people just yell out Osama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't know anything. Yeah, they don't know They don't, they don't know, any know who yeah. we are, what we where we yeah. came from. That's due to the fact of lack of education, lack of all stream of media. And one is having drama. Because I know my sister watches all these dramas with, I don't even know what, back, like, started in 2012, 13, Kim Kardashian, this, that. Like, there was this one about, uh, it was like, a Israeli and Jewish family, like, back in the days. And I'm like, I always thought to myself, I'm like, how come we don't have this representation? Yeah. I'm like, it's not that, there's, a, there's <coughs> billions of people out there that come from our culture and everything. How come we don't have that? Why don't we have that? Right. Why is it not being pushed forward? by, you know, the mainstream media. The same you know? questions I was asking, bro. So, and the fact that you kept pushing, man, seven years, I'm not going to lie, if I were in your position, I wouldn't have the same positive outlook. You know, because <laughs> yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, you have to believe, bro. You have to believe in anything yeah. that you want to do. You just have to believe in it. And that's the one thing that I think separates losers from winners. Yeah. yeah. You have to believe in whatever your concept is and you have to have monomaniacally focus on it. Mm. Like, I mean, obsession focus. Like, for me, my business is my hobby, right? My, yeah. what, what I do for a career, what I do for, to, to build legacy, you know, like, why are you doing the show? It's, it's not for any other reason than I owe my dad and my mom everything in my life. Yeah. They've given their whole life to this business. It's my job to build their legacy and to leave it on the table. So now when I look back at their legacy 10 years, 15 four years from now, you know, it's um, something I can look back and be proud of. Be like, yo, I took my parents' business to the next level. Yeah. You know, I actually owe this to someone from India. <laughs> uh, one of my dad's friends came through when I was younger. And uh, he was like, you know, what do you want to do? University to keep on college. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I don't know. Uncle, I'm going to be science kid. And, you know, yeah. I'm going to be <laughs> pharmacy and mixing medicines behind the counter, <laughs> right? At Shoppers, right? I want to do that. And he's like, okay. <laughs> he's like, you realize that your parents have dug, spent, at that point, he's like, your parents have spent 20 years digging a diamond. Yeah. He's like, it's your job now to just polish it and polish cut it, it and put in the right setting, right? Yeah. Uh, so th- I, that just imprinted into my brain and just stuck with me. And I was like, wow, <laughs> he's so right. He's been, they have this giant diamond. It's yeah. my job to shine it. And they have the foundation. They've already spent the years digging it out. I got to take it to the next level. Mm. I got to do that. No one else is going to do it for me. Yeah. And that's why you see so many businesses die nowadays. I mean, we just had a giant supermarket on George Street just closed and it broke my heart. It broke my heart it, that, you know, this legacy business uh, grocery store that was there before even we were there, mm. it closed down. And, um, you know, it's because the kids didn't take it to the next level. They didn't get involved and they have their own thoughts and, you know, that's okay too. Even now, Lahortika House, I've got great news that his son's back in the game. Um, <coughs> Imtiaz's uncle used to own that. I think I'm saying his name right. Uh, he used to own the Lahortika House and um, okay. his kids... We're having, you know, he passed away. He had a heart attack. I was with me the day he passed away. Yeah. And, you know, his wife ran the business as much as she could. Um, Elnur, sorry, Elnur was his name. Uh, and his wife uh, ran the business as much as she could. And uh, the kids went the financial direction, investment banking direction, and they wanted nothing to do with Lahortika House. And that's an iconic restaurant that's for right, Gerard yeah, Street, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's an iconic restaurant. Um, but they didn't want nothing to do with it. And they did their own thing. And now she just talked to her last week, and she's like, you know, my son... He did the investment banking in New York. He yeah. came back to Toronto. He did it over here. He worked with CIBC, and now he's he's coming back. He's gonna enter the business. Yeah. Until <coughs> the next generation enters a business, it's not possible that that business get fed with new blood, new oxygen, new lifelines. Yeah. And that's what yeah. carries it forward. Yeah. Um, that's what carries it forward, man. That's what carries it forward. Because like at the end of the day, it's our responsibility. <coughs> Unless you really don't like fit in it at all, you don't like feel like this is your route. That's different. But I feel Put like the systems in place. Exactly. Yeah. Hire the right people. 
How, exactly. Hire That's what people I mean. younger than you. Every That's day can thing be delegated. Well, no. it, it's just yes, whether we want to take on that responsibility is a different thing, and we shy away from that nowadays. You know, there was this one uh, one of my friends down in BC. Um, you know, the parents passed away from cancer, but they had this um, cleaning company, mm -hmm. and um, instead of them be like, you know what, it was a good one. Let's just do our own thing. There was three brothers and one sister. They could have been like, you know what, let's just do our own thing. You know, it was good. What it lasted. They're like, no. This is what our parents built everything and yeah. raised us on. Let's rebrand this in a way. This is the legacy they left behind, and we're going to carry it forward. Now, okay. they started in BC. Now they're in Alberta. They're in Ontario. Wow. They're all over Canada. And, and and it just came from the idea of just wanting to carry forward the legacy of their that parents. Diamond, yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. You said shine the diamond, man. Yeah. That's all it takes. Like just polishing it yeah. until, like, you never might not perfect it, but you still carry it forward to the point yeah. where you can and then you pass it forward yeah. and then you pass it forward and that's the beauty of it because you, you you're, you're in that position to do it so why would you shy away from the responsibility right right and and one thing i want to talk about is your show you know everybody like you know this is like the negative side i want to i want to focus on in our community what people don't realize is man a lot of people look at me like nate i think i did pass any cut did this that and yeah. i tell people no it's so true though because i'm like man Bro, the reason you know why how they hard it is to convince a brown family to be on reality <laughs> exactly. TV. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I had to do to get my mom and dad to be on the show? They yeah. had <laughs> wanted nothing to do with <laughs> it. <laughs> nothing. They're like, up in the community, Loki son su karege, Loki Loki o karege. You know, and uh, people jealous on the nazar on the this and that. Yeah, yeah. You know how hard it was. I literally was like, man, I worked seven years for the show. I know. I'm not <laughs> giving it up <laughs> now. And yeah. I almost did. I almost did because they were so fearful of what the community Maybe would think. think. Yeah. And what the community would judge us to be like, you know, how they are, what they are, or what kind of money, and this and that. Mm. It was yeah. so much fear in the community. But I was like, Mom, Dad, you have to break down <coughs> those barriers. You cannot allow those paradigms to control your mentality. mentality. Yep. Yep. I don't, and then the biggest thing I told them was like, listen, we could not do it. Fine. You know, we'll, 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 they're like, you know, through social media, Karija, you know, you're, you're good on Instagram. Yeah. You keep on doing the, that's doing great for business. I'm like, I'm sure. I'm like, but I won't have this opportunity for the next generation, yeah. right? And so what I told them is that I don't want to be in my deathbed at 80 no, and say, what if? Yeah. yeah. What if? Regret. I regret not. What if I had only? You know, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to live <laughs> with that. And I was like, that is the only reason why I am doing it. Yeah. Because I... If I did it and it failed or we got sued or people got jealous and people hating and the, the world burns down, okay, fine. Cares. It happened. Yeah, yeah. It happened. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm sorry I screwed up your <laughs> 40 years of hard work <laughs> and labor. My bad, you know. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll rebuild. Try. You know, we'll try again and rebuild yeah. or re whatever it is, right? But I didn't want to be left with the what if. That was my thing. You know, you cannot leave this world on your deathbed and saying, what if I had only? And that's yeah. the beauty of it too, man. Like yeah. me and Muk talk about it like, we're not the biggest naysayers that we have when we're even, like, your podcast, we're not the biggest. Well, you know, one day we will, because that's what we believe in. But the biggest naysayers we get is within our own community. It's oh, crazy, it is. Bro. It's crazy. Yeah. The fact that our own people are having a representation on something that we didn't have enough of. Our own community. I don't think anyone watches our show. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think, I feel like maybe there's, like, 100 people in our community <laughs> watch our show. Yeah. Well, the, the CBC has told us the demographics, like, 20% South Asian, 80% non-South Asian. Asian <laughs> right? So yeah. our community doesn't even support the show. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that's why I, I do everything I do. That's why I was at the Sapna event not too long ago. Yeah, I, yeah. I, anytime yeah. I have a chance to come onto our own community's network, I come on, I tell people, please go to YouTube, search for Bollywood, yeah. go to CBC Gems, search for Bollywood. It's on there. Watch it. Support the community. Support the, community. Yeah. Support the podcast <laughs> and, you know, support uh, our own creators. Our local people, yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, it, this is, this is, we're finally at the point where, we have mass. Exactly. There are people out there who are brown, <laughs> who are look like us, who have skin color, yeah. who are from India, who are new immigrants. Never, never look at Favorite to see apne log no support karo. That's the biggest thing anyone can do. You don't have to give money, nothing. nothing. Just nope. <coughs> turn it on. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Go do the yeah. dishes. Go clean. Whatever. Watch. Keep in the background. Yeah. Just support the the views means so much for support. It shows that our community is engaged. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the biggest thing out of that, too, <laughs> is that if you're going to try and do something, you can't go with an assembly. Uh, like, I mean, it's different for our parents because, par I mean, they live in, you know, their, their their mindset, like what you're saying, is just like, even with my dad, he's, <coughs> his, first th his first thought is like, oh, what are people going to say? <laughs> yeah, right? That's and it's like, I told my dad, I was like, 
do you really think people are going to give a shit? Do you think, like, it's just in your own head, it's like, do you think people are going to, like, okay, yeah, sure, we want people to see this stuff and, you know, whatever it may be, we want to create business or whatever it is, but people really don't give a shit at or all. Or even <laughs> opinions matters. Good thing at the end of the day, we're not saying, like, opinions don't matter, just, but the thing is, they're going to criticize whether you do good, bad, yeah. evil, they're going to criticize regardless. Whether you try to st- step out of the comfort zone, yeah. like me and Mo always talk about it, like whenever you try to st- step out of the comfort zone, you're going to be judged regardless. Yeah. So many people will be like, yo, why are you doing this? Like, you're all just foolish. But I'm like, guess what? The amount of people that have reached out to us personally were like, man, huge. it's huge. Like, it could be two c- two people. That meant the world to us. They're yeah. like, yo, since you guys are wearing a pugs and you have daddies and like, yeah. it it's encourages huge, us to keep this. One person, one guy has told it's us huge. this. It's for the next generation too, man. <laughs> like for us as kids, we never had this we growing didn't. up. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. I didn't yeah. have, if I had someone that looked like me doing what you guys are doing right now when I was 12, 13, I would feel way more confident about oh, being yeah. myself, about wearing a, a buggy, uh, yeah. about buggy wearing, and everything. Uh, yeah. having a Judah and not feeling like I'm, I'm alone in the world, right? Yeah. I had this uh, father come up to mm. me and he came to his kid and the kid walked outside the building and he said, Dad, I need a minute. And he was just so enamored by the building being like what he saw in the mm. show and exist in real life, that the family exists in real life. He came in, he gave me the biggest hug, this like 12-year-old kid. Crazy. You know, he looked like he had some mm. sort of challenge, right? But his dad came up to me, he's like, you have no idea how important the show is for him. He's like, he watches you guys on repeat. He'll watch your episodes all day long. He'll watch one episode 10, 15 times, 10, 15 times, yeah. 10, 15 times. And he feels like he's a part of your family and he feels like he belongs. And that is what you guys are doing, what we're doing right now, yeah. what Cam is doing, what what um, everyone is doing in our industry for yeah. South Asian industry, you know, from small designers to huge designers, you know, from Manny K. Jussel, um, Everyone, I don't want to put names out there, but so many yeah. different people out there, even all these uh, next generation uh, people like myself are entering the, f- the family business, whether it be dry cleaners or grocery stores or pizza stores or dry cleaners. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whatever it is, man, it's huge for our community we especially. Need we need it. We need <coughs> it. We need it. We just, yeah, that's, that's the thing, man. It's just like, first, I mean, back then it was just like how we wear turbans, like we were talking before. It was just like, how, you know, wearing a turban. It's like, but back then it was like, oh, you're a clown. You know, like, there's not many of us. So like, even even if people, even, like we were say, talking about, it was just like, even if there's a <coughs> someone that's representing us in our culture in a film, it's not it's not someone from our own culture. It's someone else that's wearing a turban. It's wearing a bug. Right? It's like, why is that? Why, why, why exactly don't we have our own people that are representing us, right, that are, they're pushing the, uh, you know, pushing the, you know, pushing the barriers yeah. even, like, further, right? Like, yeah. being able to help these younger kids and look up, be like, hey, like, I can do that. You know, I can do something else of that nature, of that level, and then I have the potential to do it, right? Right? Like, all of us here, like, we've all been through some sort of trauma. You were mentioning before, like, yeah. how we're wearing a bug back then, you'll get name calls and all that shit. Like, yeah. even myself, I went to a Catholic school. Only brown <laughs> dude there. I don't yeah, know how yeah. the hell he's bro, going to like a Catholic yeah. school. Bro, uh, <laughs> man, that was my dad, but that's a whole other story. But, uh, <laughs> but man, it's crazy, though. It's just, like, back then, like, for myself, like, you know, I went to a whole white school and I was the only brown dude. I remember like sitting in a b- school bus and like kids would come up behind me with the scissors and cut my hair. Yeah. Right. That, that, that's traumatic. Man. I, that's I got, so traumatic I got sent kid. to, a, I got sent to a principal office because I had a little <coughs> plastic kunda, yeah. a keychain, yeah. saying that it was a knife. Right. A yeah. weapon. Yeah. Right. And it was like ridiculous, man. It's just, I mean, no, e- back then it was different times, but it's just. No, even to right? now, remember that whole controversial thing when be like, oh, wrapping towels on a head. Yeah. It was like who Jessica Alba who made the comment? I forgot who it was. Yeah. yeah, and that's on one of the biggest shows out there, and people are watching it. And the fact that you refer to a community it and a culture typecasted and calling like wildflower. Yeah, and we have we have no voice to fight back. No. And then who fought back? No voice. No, Sid Musiala said in one of his songs, he's like, what did he say? He's like, he's like, um, uh, he's like uh, paper towel. And he's, he's like a towel paper. And he's like pagani. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like. Those people, when they do call them out, we're like even when I said the Musia, look how he broke barriers, bro. Oh look yeah. how many like barriers we're broke? talking. Said the Musia, like this is recent. Said <coughs> the so this is recent, like ten man. years ago, if less. I mean, yeah. said the, we we just got our voice as a community now, bro, to and finally think, stand up think for about ourselves. That. How long? And we're in twenties. We're talking about in twenty twenties. Yeah, we're finally getting that validation. We're like, yo, we're here. We have arrived, yeah. and we're still obviously, th- you know, to a certain Long extent. Way to go, yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna be still prevalent where people undermine and like have the condescending remarks about a culture. That's that's you know that just that evil that we have Education, in this world. Bro. This is what you guys are doing on the podcast right now. It's yeah. like we're, uh, this is what my show is about. Yeah, we just exactly. want to educate people. This is our culture. You know, we speak <laughs> Punjabi on the show as well at times. Yeah. And, you know, CBC is super 
super lenient, uh, not I shouldn't say lenient, but the super encouraging. You guys be yourself, you know? Yeah. You don't have to explain what a Gurdwara is. Just go to the Gurdwara if you want to go to exactly. the Gurdwara. Exactly. Have Gurdwara, a shot. You don't have to, Gurdwara is a holy Sikh temple of where we pray. No, you don't have to do that. Just yeah. be yourself, just right? Be yourself, yeah. So we're able to do that. We're able to <coughs> educate people by just having them watch us and normalizing normalizing our everyday life and yeah. normalizing what we do, normalizing what we do at work and how we design things, how we deal with customers. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, and what you guys are doing here are normalizing talking to other people because education is what will erase... Uh, it will provide knowledge, and yeah. with knowledge, you aren't afraid. Yeah. People are only hate what they are afraid of. They don't know what the pagdi means, right? Means, yeah. But when we do our das <coughs> on the show, on like season two, we do our das, we yeah, open the new store, yep. right? That was a really beautiful scene. See, Even I was. choked up watching my own self. I'm like <laughs> over there, I'm like, yeah. this is beautiful the way that they captured it. Yeah. It's like there was no explanation of like what we were doing. We were just allowed to be. And we were and through that, people are able to educate themselves by giving their own interpretation of how they want to of the whole situation. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, these guys are praying. It seems like they're doing a prayer to open the new store. That's yeah. very sweet. And that's really nice. And look at the way that everyone's head is covered. And look at the way they're putting oh. Amrit on the ground before they mm -hmm. walk in. Yeah. You know, they're putting water. I guess that's some sort of holy water. Now you have this education erasing fear. And when you don't have room for fear, you have room for love, man. That's why mm -hmm. there's so much hate in the world right now. Because people are afraid of one country and another country. And one skin color, another skin color. One religion, another religion. And they're yeah. all... Wars are happening because people are have are uneducated. Yeah, it's like perpetuated hate, you know, yeah, without Some any education. knowledge of understanding of yeah. a lack of know, education. Yeah, yeah. just a lack of education, and that's a beautiful thing we have now is yeah. we have so many people where pugs and stuff that are coming like we're more involved in sports side. You have kids that are going to university; they're having pug uh, judo playing in collegiate levels. Yeah, man. Is he, was it Jesse Baines that just got on Vancouver Canucks? <laughs> was it was that McGraw? Arch Baines. Arch Baines. How crazy is that? That's huge. That's huge. My one I lost my mind when <laughs> I saw that. I was like, I comment on every video I could because I was like, this is so huge for a community yeah. because now you have just unlocked a level for like the next generation Asian coming in. Have. I played hockey my whole life and there was no one that looked like me that played hockey. I was like, oh, I guess I don't belong. You know, like uh, I would be in the locker room with the other guys and, you know, I try to get my... The helmet, helmet on, fixed. right? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and it wouldn't fit, you know? <laughs> Shout out to Bullet Helmets, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they yeah made Bullet the Helmets, they're making actual Pagri uh, helmets now for the Jude. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had that growing up, man. <laughs> Bro, I had, uh, struggle had for this that? extra, <laughs> extra large head helmet on top of my already, my Juda. Make you me feel so like uncomfortable, head. right? You to get the extra strap yeah. in, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, man. It was, it was crazy. But now it's like you've unlocked the new level what for our yeah. culture, you know, yeah. like doing a podcast. I never saw a podcast growing up. I'm a, I'm a huge podcast fan. I never yeah. saw anything, anything of our, our culture, culture of our religion, of anyone who wore a bagri, which is why it was so important for me to, <coughs> to follow you. When I, when I saw you guys, <laughs> I was like, oh shoot, these guys Hold are doing, guy doing a podcast? Yeah. I was like, follow, 100%. I want to see what's happening over you here. Know, that's right? genuine love. And yeah, man, it was huge. It, I was like, this is amazing. I'm like, I'm the, I'm, hearing podcasts for so long i am a joe rogan fan um <laughs> you know uh, when well, it comes to ones, yeah. so many different fans you know uh, different podcasts uh jim yeah. Rohn, um lewis house um schultz you know, so many so many amazing yeah, podcasts yeah. out there but no one from our background, background yeah. Yeah. So but we you guys are that's I a think, goal I, I we need more of it man we need so, more of it so. yeah. and we could see it like yeah. we get messages from kids man it's just like some of them say like hey like you you've you've given us like a perspective of, like you, you you guys look like as uh, older brothers to us, right? We never really had that. And they're like, hey, like I, I received one message when a kid was like, uh, he was trying to take his own life until he started to see our podcast. Oh. I was like, oh, I was like, I never really see myself, <laughs> you know, being in that perspective, being oh. able to be in that type of position, right? But I was like, it really opened our eyes. I was like, man, <coughs> I was like, if only, if only we had this shit when we were younger too, younger, right? Imagine how much time would be saved and whatever, but I also think that because that through that trauma we were able to build this because we just don't want our future generations to go through that. So oh this yeah. is the blessing that we have. Yeah, we have the blessing of changing that, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's the greatest advantage we can take of, of. You know, we can take advantage of that now. We ever have this ability to have come down to you know this beautiful studio, have Chandra to sit down with us, yeah. have this ability to put out in the social media with it's our experiences, man. Right, yeah, and and, and that's what brings it together, man. I think on on that note, man. I think to summarize this. Hearing your story about everything, you know, your selfless act, the way you carry yourself, we see why Chandan fashion is where it's at. Yeah. Because, you know, from what you said, your principles, your morals, your values, those things carry forward a business more than anything. Yeah. You can only bullshit in life so far until it catches up to you and people catch up to it. 
Yeah. You can't, and it's the fact that your parents carried it off for such a long time to now. Now I could always ask, I'm like, damn, like since 1984, I can't, I mean, since that long, it's still <laughs> going. Yeah, we're still 40 years, is like 40 years is October. 40, bro, like yeah. that's crazy. crazy. That's a now lot. We have Chandan Heritage here in Brampton on Y'all got the LeBron now. James yeah. Jeopardy <laughs> going on <laughs> right now, man. 40 years, bro. It's bro, crazy. Now, but God bless you. Y'all keep going and Thank wish you, you all the success in the world. But on that, on that note, we always ask our guests, man, let's, what's the one thing, Chandan, you would say you want to give out to the youth? Doesn't even matter about the youth, the older generation, Danya, yeah. Tanya, Chatiya, Mama, Perna, whoever is watching this, man. What's the one message you want to give out to Don't, them? We'll change it. We'll change it. <laughs> you want to change it up? One, okay, we'll change it. We'll one change positive <laughs> and one negative advice you received. Okay. Let's change it up a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so <laughs> growing up, I was never a good student. You know, like I still remember every report card I got. Jundan is a wonderful kid in class. If he would only apply himself, yeah. he would be great. If uh, he would <laughs> only work harder at school, he would be great. If he would only do this, or great. And I was always judged by my grades. I got 60s, 70s, 60s, 70s. I never felt like I was intelligent. Yeah. What's wrong with the schooling system is, is that they judge people on how intelligent you are based off of your grades. Yeah. So for any youth that are listening, I am an example of someone who had... <laughs> shitty grades in high school. <laughs> I had shitty grades in university until I found my calling and it clicked for me. Now I just got told last week that I'm up for the uh, alumni award right now. Uh, it, they give it to one mm. student a year, and I'm uh, I got the it? alumni wow. excellence award. Really? Yeah, and this crazy. is the same school that every year my report cards. I remember mom would show me. You only apply yourself. If you only applied yourself. If you only applied yourself. Apply yourself on what? Yeah. Upon myself on re repeating a textbook, that's not who I want to be. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to just memorize shit just to spit it back out. And now you give me an A because I memorize better than other people. Yeah. It's so important that for the kids that are watching, youth that are watching, do not judge yourself. Love yourself because you are special. You just don't know what you're special at just yet. And if you do, then do that. Follow that. Whether it be... A gamer. Look at these gamers nowadays, Crazy. man. They're making millions Same. of dollars right Industry now just gaming and playing up. Fortnite. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter what it is. Just apply it to yourself. Just be really good to yourself and be honest to yourself. But that's not going to mean anything if you don't work hard. Yeah. 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 And that's what I learned from my parents is that you got to work hard, 100%. Anything Thomas. you do. For me, I don't have weekends. This long weekend just passed. I worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, I was at the Brampton store. Evening, I went to the to downtown store. I commuted <coughs> between two cities. I did it again on Sunday again. Yeah. I was at the downtown store on the Sunday morning, and then I went to the Brampton store in the evening. Hour and a half commute both ways. There's no day such thing as days off. Yeah. You know, there's no days off. If you're taking days off and you expect to be successful, <laughs> good, luck. Know, good luck. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. I, I haven't had a weekend <laughs> since I was 16 years old. You know, my friends always be partying, having fun, and whatever. They go out Friday night. <coughs> I go out Friday night too. But Saturday morning, my ass is in the store. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, "Why well, you gotta go? Don't worry about your store. Chandan, don't worry. The customers don't worry. They'll find." I'm like, no, 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 no. There's only one yeah, Chandan, they and they're all understand. asking for me because I am good at what I do, I and they connect with me. They're not connecting with my dad. They're not connecting with my mom. They're asking for Chandan. So I have to go be there. I have a responsibility because I know the future I'm building for myself. Yep. Yeah. Um, and one negative advice. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> it's okay. You can call people out. <laughs> you can call people out. <laughs> the negative advice I got was, you know, taking the easy path in life. There's mm -hmm. no such thing. There's no such thing as shortcuts. People would say, you know, go this way. Did I come so Go this yeah. way. It would be easy. Get, you know, cut corners here. It will be easier. Yeah. You have to look at yourself in the mirror there every, every day. Yeah. You have to look at yourself in the mirror there every day. Um, and you have to just continuously be better and fuel that fire. And, you know, don't just be so <coughs> focused just on yourself either. Yeah. That's not good either. I mean, like, I see what my competitors are doing. I see what they're doing, and I, and that fuels me. You know, I'm like, oh shoot, these guys are doing that. Yes, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I gotta go ten times harder right now. I gotta work ten times harder. I gotta get them even more newer yeah. designs. Yeah, I gotta create some more bomb shit that I gotta sell. People <laughs> say, you know what? This is even better than those label designers out there. Th this stuff is even more unique and better yeah. quality than that. Yeah, use that as fire. Don't just put your blinders on and not care what anyone thinks, and you're just gonna live in your la la blah blah world you know and just manifest it all to positivity manifestation means nothing without hard work, hard work yeah exactly yeah look at your competitors see what they're doing work even harder than them yep. you too yeah 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's right on man 
Yeah. And that's one of the main key factors that we always hone in on is, man, I give it to y'all. Don't go half ass and stuff. Don't ever don't think like, don't think it's going to come to you because shit ain't coming for you. Shit, it's not, it, there's no handouts in life, nor will there be handouts. Don't think there's a scheme out there that'll make you $1,000 in one day or whatever these BS courses they'll be selling these days. Yeah. And we're enticed by, we're enticed by these things. Because yeah. why? Everybody Short wants cut. the easy way out. Short cut. There's yeah. no such thing. A six months rich, man. Everybody be rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, There's learning true. lessons, though. You can learn there from is. it, right? Learning I had a lessons. cousin come up to you one time. He's like, yo, this, uh, uh, you know, multi-level marketing thing. You know, you get, you, <laughs> oh, you got to get on a phone plan. You sell the phone plan. You got to I'm like, okay, let me see what this is about. I yeah. learned about it, though. Yeah. I, I even went to one of the giant conferences in North Carolina. I flew my ass down there just to go learn from Les Brown speak, who was there at that conference, and to learn from all these, like, Great people who were excellent Les speakers. Brown? Yeah, he was there. I at love that Les conference. Brown. Les yeah. Brown is probably one of the most person I gravitate towards. He was there at that conference. Really, multi level national. Like I could have just crapped on him and like, yo, <laughs> boss, like, uh, you yeah. know, this is all garbage. Yeah. I was like, let me educate <coughs> myself. What I, you don't know, what you don't know. No. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, learn, learn. Be, be always a lifelong student. Learn, yeah. always be learning. So and in my yeah, business, yeah. ABC, I always be capturing. <laughs> 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 and also, I heard this one thing too. Your wife says it too, and I'm hearing it out. She always says it on on your show. She's always like, Chandan is always on Chandan's time. Chandan's time. <laughs> Chandan's yeah, time. My, uh, my boys still make fun of me all the time. I have my own time, man. It's, just, it's not like I'm slacking. It's just yeah. that I, I can't You're so leave, busy. And yeah, I can't leave a so customer. I can't leave a sale. I cannot walk away from what I have to do to keep doing what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that note, it's so all. Yeah. If you know Chandler's running late, you know why. You See know why now. You're taking care of this. I'm just kidding. Well, my boys going to have a field of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, thank you so much, Chandler. I think you time out of your busy day. We know yeah, you got guys. so much going on. And this means the world to us. You coming on, you know, even supporting us from an early age. So, yeah. Of yeah, a podcast. 100%, yeah, no, yeah, 100%. She says nothing but the best. <laughs> like I said, man, bro, like you've already changed one person's life. That's all the fuel you need to do to keep on going. You yeah. literally saved someone's life. Exactly. How Craziness. amazing does that feel? No, that's yeah, crazy. Man, it's amazing. Keep on pushing, guys. Yeah. Anything else, Mark? Nothing. That's it, man. It's a good podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. got this is a good one. You got to enjoy it. Let yeah. us know I what you guys think. Yeah, yeah, give us comments and all that. And then see you guys on the next one. All right. Thank Peace. You. Peace. <laughs>